This is going to be a study on the subject of fake healers. Are they fake healers or faith healers? Uh, are they true brethren or are they betrayers? Are these faith healers faithful brethren or just betrayers of Christians? Are they led by the Holy Ghost or just bringing to shame the name of Jesus Christ? There was a man in the Bible named Judas Iscariot. And the Bible calls him a traitor in Luke 6.16. Did you know he sold the Lord out for money? And that is why the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil. Matthew 10, 4 tells us that Judas betrayed Jesus Christ. Something crazy about all this is that Judas could also heal people. If you read Matthew chapter 10, verses 4 through 8, you will see that Judas was part of the twelve that Jesus Christ sent out to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and so on. And in John 6, 70, it lets us know that Judas was a devil before the devil even entered into his body. And Judas was out for himself and out for the pleasures of this world. He didn't have his affections set on things above, but rather on things on the earth beneath. Something interesting about Judas is that he is a definite type of the Antichrist. And the Antichrist, when he comes in the tribulation, may have the spirit of Judas Iscariot. And in this study, you need to ask yourself, are these fake healers, true brethren, or just betrayers? And ask yourself, do they heal the blind or do they rob you blind? Another characteristic of Judas was that he was a thief. As the Bible calls him in John chapter 12 and verse 6, not only did he heal the blind, he would also rob you blind. Many ignorant Christians give money to these frauds who claim they can heal people. These thieves sell products that are supposed to heal people, but they don't actually heal anybody. And what kind of a disgusting, vile, nasty snake likes to go around and steal money from sick people? These faith healers that claim to have the apostolic signs do just that. They steal from sick people. Ask yourself this. Is someone like Benny Hinn a apostle or a poser? If you look at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, I know thy works and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Do they really have the gifts of the apostles? If they don't, then they are the biggest lying frauds on the planet. If they really have the sign gifts of the apostles, then they should be able to do all the signs listed in Mark chapter 16. If you look... At Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Can these fake healers pick up a deadly serpent or drink deadly poison? Next time you run into a fake healer, Ask him if he can drink rat poison so that you can believe he is sent from God. He won't do it. That is what these sign gifts are for. They are to confirm the word with signs following, as, as, as it says in Mark 16. And if they really got the gifts, then they should be able to do all these things. They should be able to take up serpents, drink any deadly thing, lay hands on the sick, and all of them should recover. The reason why these fake apostles are posers is because they all have misfires. Not everyone gets healed. They claim the ones who don't get healed didn't have enough faith. But in the Bible, when Jesus healed Lazarus, Lazarus was raised from the dead. Lazarus didn't have faith. He was dead. The reason the apostles had the gifts of healing was to help the Jews believe what was being preached. The Bible even talks about Jesus healing people who
who didn't have faith. If you look at Mark chapter 6, 4 through 6, it says, But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he lay his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. Some people were healed, but they were in unbelief. And the only time someone was rebuked for not having enough faith for the healing was in Matthew chapter 17. And it wasn't the person who needed to be healed that didn't have the faith. It was the people who were doing the healing that didn't have the faith. Matthew 17, 17 through 20 says, Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. The next thing you should ask yourself is, Are they men working miracles or just the working of satan in second thessalonians 2 9 it says even him who's coming is after the working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders this is referring to the antichrist who will be able to work miracles another bad thing about this faith healing stuff going on is that satan can counterfeit the gifts Men will see a person supposedly get healed and believe their experience, they'll believe what they saw, over the words of the King James Bible. If men are doing things contrary to Scripture, then they aren't led by the Holy Spirit, but rather by an unclean spirit. The Bible talks about the mystery of iniquity, which is the Antichrist. In 2 Thessalonians 2, seven, says the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The Bible talks about many antichrists, and these fake healers are just forerunners for the antichrist. The devil can make his men look just like God's men, unless you know the Bible and can see through the deception. In 2 Corinthians 11:13 through 15 it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So you have these fake apostles, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and they're deceiving people, deceiving Christians everywhere into thinking that they're the real thing and they should send them their money and if they don't have faith then they can't be healed and if they didn't get healed they didn't have enough faith and see and it says and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light the devil doesn't always come as looking evil he comes as looking like an angel of light and his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. But moving on, the next thing you should ask yourself, are they healers or hypocrites? If they can heal, then why do they have sicknesses themselves? Why would they need hearing aids, glasses, Tylenol, or anything else to get rid of a sickness or discomfort? Another question is, do they serve the God of the Bible or the God of their belly? Philippians 3, 17 through 19 says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. These fake healers love to feed themselves. The eyes of man are never satisfied, as the Bible says. They want more and more money. There is nothing more sickening than turning on the TV to 
TBN and hearing some fake sissy talking real pious and asking you to send him money. Titus 111 describes them perfectly. If you look at Titus 111, it says, Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. The love of money is the root of all evil. They want money to fulfill all the desires of their flesh, and they need to feed their belly. They will rob you blind to get your money. The first time someone was healed in the Bible was when Moses healed his own hand in Exodus chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. And the purpose of Moses being able to do this miracle and the many miracles to come was to convince unbelieving Jews that he was legit and the real man sent from God. The same thing goes for the gifts of the apostles. Mark 16, 20 says they confirm the word with signs following. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22, it says the Jews require a sign. When the Jews rejected the Messiah in the book of Acts, Paul talks about turning to the Gentiles. So God quit dealing with the Jews and started dealing primarily with the Gentiles. At this point, the sign gift ceased and Paul couldn't even heal himself anymore. And he even left Trophimus sick in 2 Timothy 4.20. He told Timothy to use a little wine for his stomach's sake and often infirmities. So his friend was sick often. And if he had the gift of healing, then he left him hanging. He could have healed him or sent him a special item to heal him. But he didn't still have the gift of healing. If you look at Acts chapter 19, 11 through 12, it says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought into the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So he could have sent a handkerchief or an apron and healed Timothy. And even Peter, he could heal people by just his shadow passing over them. But when God switched to dealing with the Gentiles, the sign gift seized. And did you know that at the end of Paul's ministry, he had a doctor tagging, tagging along with him everywhere he went, which was Luke, the beloved physician, as it calls him in Colossians 4.14. Paul had been beat down so much that there wasn't no telling what was wrong with his body. And in 2 Timothy, Paul says, only Luke is with me. He needed a doctor because his healing powers were gone. He lost his touch because it switched from Jew to Gentile. The Gentiles aren't the one that require the sign. The sign gifts and the gift of healing come back during the time of Jacob's trouble. In Revelation 9.3, the devilish locusts that come up out of the bottomless pit are said to have power like scorpions. The locusts have power like scorpions. Then if you look in Luke chapter 10, and verse 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So that was one of the gifts that Jesus gave to the apostles. They'd be able to tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall hurt them. The men who have the gifts in the time of Jacob's trouble, which you know as the tribulation, would be able to tread on these locusts. The Bible also talks about in Revelation 9.19 that the devilish horses that John saw, which have tails like serpents. And Luke 10.19 says the disciples had the power to tread on serpents. So like the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is for these men in the time of Jacob's trouble and gives them the gifts, then all these bad things in the tribulation won't be able to hurt them. In Revelation 8.11, the waters are made bitter. And in the tribulation, if you read the book of Revelation, it talks about the waters being turned to blood. And many men die because of the waters. But men with the gifts won't die just like it said in mark 16 one of the gifts is being able to drink any deadly thing in psalms 
or in Psalms 140 in verse 3, it says, They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. The Antichrist is going to have his tongue sharpened like a serpent. He's going to be an eloquent speaker. And men with the sign gifts would be able to sit through a whole speech given by the Antichrist and not be deceived by the poison under his lips. In 1 Corinthians 13, 2, Paul says he has enough faith to move mountains. And then if you look at Revelation 8 and chapter 8, or 8 and verse 8, it says, And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Like I said, you have water turning to blood in the tribulation, and Jesus... One of his, his first miracle was turning water to wine, a type of blood. Moses, the first healer, the first guy with the power to do miracles, also turned water to blood. And get this, Moses comes back in the tribulation as one of the two witnesses. So right now these gift ha gifts have stopped for the time being because we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But, the gifts come back in the tribulation after the church is taken out and God starts dealing with the Jews again. And that is why it is called the time of Jacob's trouble. These gifts don't cease until that which is perfect has come, as it talks about in 1 Corinthians 13.10. And that that which is perfect is the one who, or the one which strengthens you, as the King James says. The new versions say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But your King James says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So just because 1 Corinthians 13.10 says, that which is perfect is come, doesn't mean it can't be talking about Jesus Christ. Just because it doesn't say when that who is perfect has come. It can say that which. And something else you probably won't believe because people have a hard time believing things that they haven't ever heard. But I believe it is possible that John and some of the other disciples make another appearance during the tribulation with the sign gifts. And you say that's crazy. But yet you believe Moses and Elijah are coming back. And they have been gone a whole lot longer than the apostles. So why does it seem so far-fetched that some other people may be coming back? Sometimes you believe things are crazy and strange just because you've never heard it. But look at this. Look at what it says about John in the book of Revelation. In Revelation 10 verses 10 through 11 and it says, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, and nations, and tongues, and kings. He's saying this to the apostle John. So he's possibly coming back to do a little preaching before many peoples, nations and tongues and kings how is he going to prophesy to all these people of different languages i guess he will have the gift of tongues which is in a gibberish prayer language in acts chapter 2 when the disciples spoke in tongues all the people heard them speak in their own language now i'm not saying that for sure that john or any of the apostles are coming back that was just speculation so don't get all bent out of shape over me saying that. But moving on, many of these fake healers today are trying to copy these gifts of the apostles. And they may very well end up in the crowd who is claiming to have many wonderful works at the great white throne judgment. In closing, look at this in Matthew seven twenty two through 23. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then while I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. We can't be saved by our good works. 
We can't be saved by any good thing we do. The only way we can be saved is by believing the gospel. And Paul revealed to us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. If you look at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And if you look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14, Colossians 1.14, it says, In whom we have redemption, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus Christ died for our sins. How did he die? He shed his blood on the cross. He was buried and he rose again the third day. We needed him to do this because we were sinners. As it says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ had to die because you are a sinner. You needed a Savior because you can't get to heaven by your own good works. No amount of good works that you do can outweigh one bad thing that you did. And that's why Jesus had to die for your sins. You needed a perfect man to die for you. And Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How do you get saved? You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't just believe he existed in history. You take it a step further and rely on him and him alone, putting your trust in him to save you and take away your sins. You turn from your own self-righteousness and rely on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You realize your own goodness can't save you and that only... The finish, relying on the finished work of Jesus Christ can save a man. You don't quit sinning to get saved. You don't continue living a good life to, get, to stay saved. You're saved once and for all when you believe the gospel. And you need to stay in fellowship, not stay in relationship. The relationship always stays the same. Once you're saved, you're always saved. But you need to stay in fellowship by a daily confession of sins, reading your Bible, praying, and trying to do your best daily. And you don't do them, them things to stay saved. You do those things because you are saved and because you love Jesus Christ. But once you have the blood applied to your soul, it can't get unapplied. Once you're born again, you can't get unborn again. Once you have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ, you can't get it taken away. But I hope you're saved and I hope that this study has helped you realize that all these fake healers on TV or wherever else you may have seen them are nothing but false apostles and liars according to the Bible.